Now we begin with that developing story out of Saline County. Police say a man is in custody charged in a double homicide last night. 37 year old Brian Reed was arrested around 10 PM. Police say they got a call about someone attacking two other people at a home on Jolie Place in East End. When police arrived, they found two people dead. Shortly after Reed was identified as a suspect, he was then found and arrested about 40 miles north at an address in Austin, Arkansas. Reed is facing charges of first degree murder, first degree battery and endangering the welfare of a minor. We are also following a rainy end to the weekend, and as you can see on that radar right there, storms are hanging around, but for how much longer? For that answer, we turn to our meteorologist, Simone Thomas. I love the pink. It's so bright. I want more of that outside. I have to bring out my lightning earrings, too, <laughs> for the storms, because we got a stormy start to the week. Now, it will get better towards the end of the week, but tonight into tomorrow, even Tuesday, we are tracking the chance of some showers and thunderstorms across the natural state. Now, the storms across northern Arkansas or the showers, forgive me, across northern Arkansas are all a part of that line that we saw move through this morning where we saw some of those showers moving through throughout the morning, moving off to our northeast. Now from southwest moving into central Arkansas, we're starting to see more of those isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms. As we look across the metro, we see a bit of a stronger thunderstorm along that I-5. 530 line closer towards Whitehall. Some of those yellows and oranges indicating what will likely be some heavier downpours there up towards Jacksonville into Cabot. Some of those yellows indicating some heavier downpours as well. Now, as we continue through the evening, we'll see more of this chance of rain through the evening before we get into that Monday morning. Now, between now and tomorrow morning, there is a level one or marginal threat of severe weather. The main impact if we see any types of warnings issued is going to be for the strong wind gusts. Now we'll talk about the next couple of days and the look at the week ahead in that seven day outlook. So stay with us. And much of Southeast Texas is underwater this weekend. Heavy rains over the past several weeks have filled reservoirs and saturated the soil across the greater Houston area. Now that the water has nowhere left to go, entire neighborhoods are left submerged under several feet of brown, murky water. Emergency crews have already made hundreds of rescues to people stranded on roadways and rooftops. This is the worst I've seen, second only to Hurricane Harvey. It's not over because even if it doesn't rain, all that water north of us coming from Lake Livingston, coming from Lake Conroe it, and, and, and Lake Houston, it's all going to make its way down to where we are now. So the worst is still yet to come. Making things worse, officials were forced to release even more water from a dam along the San Jacinto River. That caused the river level to shoot up by five to six feet in the span of just a few hours. Back here at home, we continue to see signs of recovery from last year's tornado. Over in West Little Rock, their sign is just that, the new Breckenridge Village sign. And all new tonight, THV 11's Rebecca Brown shows us how it's turning heads. When you pull up to Breckenridge Village, it may not look like we're in business because the sign's not up. A sign is often the first thing people notice when walking or driving past a business. One year ago, this was the signage of Breckenridge Village after the March 31st tornado, but today is back and better than ever. It's a brand new sign that kind of reflects the newness of the center. You know, we're redoing everything at Breckenridge. And we're so excited about it. Breckenridge Village was one of the hardest hit areas by the March 31st tornado. And Jim Keith, part owner of Breckenridge Village, says this sign is just one of the many new additions. Just like here at Mount Fuji, uh, it's emblematic of what we're trying to do. It's beautiful, it's unique, it kind of says who we want the center to be going forward. And like Eat My Catfish, that Travis Hester has done a great job of remodeling after, after the tornado. His sales are up like 15% versus last year and it's just a, a good indication of the momentum that we have going forward. It's a beautiful new beginning. Uh, there's, there's been so much silver lining in it, and we're just thankful to have people back. Travis Hester, the president of Eat My Catfish, says it's a good feeling to see people flocking to this area again, adding this positive momentum is just the beginning. Breckenridge 2.0, we're going to make this place bigger and better than ever in the shopping center as a whole. You know, Waldo's about to open up, DeLuca's around the corner, Mount Fuji's doing great. Uh, the center looks awesome, and that new sign just highlights it all. 
But the best feeling, not just enjoying this moment with family, but a community who never gave up on them. We wanted to be that meeting spot for the community. We feel us like that, but you know, the center needed some love, and the tornado gave us an opportunity to do that. In Little Rock, Rebecca Brown, THV 11 News. Waldo's Chicken and Beer in Breckenridge Village is set to open later this month. If you want more details, you can visit our website right now at chv11.com. Commencement ceremonies are taking place this weekend after days of demonstrations and encampments on college campuses. Demonstrations continued across the country from the University of Texas in Austin to DePaul University in Chicago, where police responded after tense moments between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli protesters. The campus demonstrations have led to divisions inside the Democratic Party, just as President Joe Biden is in the middle of a tough re-election campaign. This is a defining moment for this generation, similar to anti-Vietnam protests, anti-apartheid protests, anti-Iraq war protests. And they're telling us that th over 30,000 people have died. It's time for this war to end. I, I, will, I will say that, that these kind of protests haven't been helpful. New York City officials claim outside agitators played a role in inciting violence at protests there. The city says almost half of the people arrested at Columbia and City College last week were not affiliated with either school. In order to end some of these demonstrations, some U.S. governors are wanting to hold students accountable, some even talking about expelling them. But are governors actually allowed to do that? Let's verify. Here's Ariane Dettiel with more. Amid nationwide pro-Palestinian protests on college campuses, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has a message for students in Texas. In a post on X, Abbott said, students joining in hate-filled anti-Semitic protests at any public college or university in Texas should be expelled. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis issued a similar warning. Yeah, you do that in Florida at, at our universities, we're showing you the door. You're going to be expelled. One viral post exaggerated DeSantis's claims to say that he plans to expel all students who protest Israel. And that led others to wonder, do governors actually have the authority to expel students from public universities? Let's verify using these sources. According to the Education Commission of the states, when it comes to expelling students across the country, the decision to do so ultimately rests with the university or system leadership. Under Florida law, the authority to expel, suspend, or otherwise discipline students is given to the presidents of public colleges, not the governor. But not even state university presidents can decide to unilaterally suspend or expel students on a whim. Public universities are government institutions, which means they must offer students their due process rights before the university can suspend or expel them. So we can verify, no, a governor cannot expel or suspend students from public universities. However, governors can influence universities to make certain decisions or establish certain rules. For example, in March, Texas Governor Greg Abbott issued an executive order directing state universities to review and update free speech policies to address the sharp rise in anti-Semitic speech and acts on university campuses and establish appropriate punishments, including expulsion from the institution. Many of the nationwide student protests are at private universities like Columbia, which are not run by their state's government. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Till. We have a heads up for drivers here this week. There will be some closures on Highway 67 in Jacksonville. Weather permitting, crews will stop northbound and southbound lanes for 15 minutes at various times between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. to hang bridge girders at North James Street. This will be going on throughout the week, and it's all a part of construction to widen Highway 67 to six lanes between Main Street and Vandenberg Boulevard. Well, we got more rain in the forecast. I'll tell you how long that's looking to stick around and just how warm we're looking to get this week in the seven day outlook that's coming up right after this break. And it's been just 24 hours since an Arkansas win at the Kentucky Derby. Ahead, we'll hear from the owners about what that magical moment was like. 